Okay, so when we name and number vertebrae, when we want to be really jiggy with it and really get it, when we name the vertebrae, we can say the, you have your seven cervical vertebrae, and we can talk about C7. We can say C7, or we can say somebody might be having a problem with L5, which would, which would mean the fifth lumbar vertebrae. We also have two special names for your two most superior vertebrae. Your two most superior vertebrae are called your atlas and your axis. So your atlas is the god that holds up the world. You ever see one of those statues? So you can think about your head as like a globe and your globe of your head is sitting on your atlas and your head and your atlas rotate on your axis. So cervical vertebrae one is also known as the atlas and cervical vertebrae two or C2 is also called your axis. So those words are atlas, which is C1 and axis, which is C2. Okay. You'll see that also on um, page 25 in your coloring book. Okay, so take a couple minutes to write those three times and then we're gonna come back to do more bones. Okay, hey, so looking at Mr. Bones here and starting at the most inferior part of the skeleton is the coccyx. Just superior to the coccyx is the sacrum. And as we move more superior, we have the five lumbar with spinous process and transverse process. We have 12 thoracic vertebrae with spinous process and transverse process. And we have seven cervical vertebrae. So we move to the skull. We have the skull. We also have a ridge in the back of your skull. So you can put your hands at your skull and you can find the place where the soft tissue of the neck meets this ridge and we call that ridge the occipital ridge. Then put your fingers just behind your earlobe. So put your finger on your earlobe here and push on this bump. That's called the mastoid process. So we have the occipital ridge and we have the mastoid process. In your coloring book, that's gonna be on page 22, we have the mastoid process. It's easier to find the mastoid process on yourself than to look in the book because the book doesn't show you where your ear is because it's only your bones, okay? So you have the skull, you have the occipital ridge and you have the mastoid process. Your lower jaw bone is called your mandible. So let's write those out. You have occipital ridge, you have mastoid process, Oh, that's that word process again. Hey, so anatomy has a lot of words that mean bump. So if it's a process, it's a bump. A transverse bump, transverse process, spinous process, spinous bump, mastoid process, mastoid bump. Then your lower jawbone is called your mandible. So you can take a few minutes to write out occipital ridge, occipital ridge, occipital ridge, write out mastoid process, mastoid process, mastoid process, and write out mandible, 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 and we'll come right back. 
I hope you wrote them out three times each. <laughs> okay, the, uh, the next area of the body we're gonna look at is the shoulder area. We're gonna start on page 29 in your coloring book, and you're gonna find the clavicle. The clavicle is also called your collarbone. The clavicle. Uh, this is probably the bone, other than your toe bones and your finger bones, this is probably the bone that's the most commonly broken one in the human body. That's the clavicle, collarbone clavicle. The clavicle comes all the way out and it actually meets your scapula. So we know the scapula is back here, the shoulder blade, that's the scapula. Scapula has a ridge on it that we call the spine of the scapula. And the spine of the scapula comes all the way around and meets the clavicle. So the clavicle is your collarbone. And if you can follow your collarbone all the way out, you come to a big bump and you keep going back and that's the spine of the scapula. Scapula is your shoulder blade Collarbone, collarbone, clavicle. Then you have the clavicle meeting the sternum. Okay, so you have this whole area is scapula, clavicle, sternum. On your coloring book, you have the clavicle meeting the scapula. The sternum is on page 28. So you can turn to page 28 and you can see the clavicle meets the sternum. So you have, from the back, you have scapula, spine of scapula, clavicle, sternum. Then on page 28, you have all the ribs. So you have 12 pairs of ribs, but 10 of them are connected to the sternum and two pairs of ribs don't connect to the sternum at all. So on page 28, you have the 10 pairs of ribs. It says 12 ribs or 12 pairs of ribs and the very bottom or the very inferior ribs are the ribs that are not attached so you have two pairs of ribs that are floating. So we could say you have 10 pairs, you have a total of 12 pairs of ribs, 10 pairs of ribs attached to the sternum, and two pairs of the ribs are floating ribs, do not attach to the sternum. So if we want to write that out, we say your collarbone is your, ah, I'm having a hard time reaching over there is the clavicle and the clavicle attaches to the top part of your shoulder blade which is your scapula you have a ridge on the top of your scapula that we call the spine of the scapula your Clavicle attaches to your breastbone, which is the sternum. And your sternum attaches to 10 pairs of ribs, but you also have two other pairs of ribs that are floating. So you have a total of 12 pairs of ribs, two pairs are floating. Or another way to say that is 10 pairs of ribs are attached to the sternum. So go ahead and write these words out three times each. Clavicle, clavicle, clavicle. Scapula, scapula, scapula. Sternum, sternum, sternum. 12 pairs of ribs, 12 pairs of ribs, 12 pairs of ribs. Two pairs are floating, two pairs are floating, two pairs are floating. Or you could say 10 pairs attached to sternum. 10 pairs attached to sternum, 10 pairs attached to sternum. Do that, we'll see you in a couple minutes. We've only got the arms 
hands and fingers left. Good job. Okay, so um, go ahead back to page 29 and we'll look at the, the arm bone and the proximal arm. So in your arms and, feet, arms and legs, things that are far away from you are distal and things that are closer to your core are proximal. In your torso, from your head down to your coccyx, things are either uh, superior or they're inferior. Okay, that's because what if your arm is here, your thumb would be like inferior, but if your arm was here, your thumb would be superior. So wherever you put your arm, it's always going to be either farther away from your core or closer to your core. In your arm, you have the bone that is in your proximal arm. That's your humerus. That's your funny bone. <laughs> it really is. And then in your distal arm, you have two bones. You have the bone on the thumb side and the bone on the pinky side. The bone on the thumb side is the radius. Pinky side is ulna. Thumb side radius, pinky side ulna. So you were in anatomical positioning. Your thumbs should always be lateral. So in anatomical positioning, thumb side radius, your radius is the more lateral bone in your distal arm. Thumb side radius, pinky side ulna. Then you have the bones of the hand and fingers, very similar to your foot bones. Your wrist bones are the carpals, your hand bones are the metacarpals, and your fingers are phalanges, same thing. Okay, so carpals are closer to your cuff, or you can be in the carpool with your carpals. Your tarsals are your toes. Tarsals, toes, carpals, cuff. Okay, so let's do those words. On um, page 29, we have the humerus. And then we turn to page 31 for the thumb side radius, pinky side ulna, thumb side radius, pinky side ulna, or thumb side radius, pinky side ulna. The radius and the ulna. And then we just have the bones of the hands and fingers now. The Bones at your cuff are called the carpals, and oh, oh let's let's get you to the right um, page here, page thirty-three. Page thirty-three, you have the carpals on your wrist, then you have the metacarpals, and then you have phalanges, just like your toe bones. Carpals are your buddies; they're your pals. You will have every massage therapist wants to be in very good communication with your pals, the car pals. You want to be very careful about not hyperextending car pals. You want to keep them your friends. So when you do your circulatory massage class with healing hands, you're going to learn how to do your body mechanics just perfectly so you never hyperextend your car pals, you're going to keep them as your friends forever. They're your pals. So to remind you how we spell it, it's car pal and meta car pal and phalanges. That's it. That or that's all the bones, all the bones that we work on in your circulatory massage anatomy portion of that class. So you can listen to this video a hundred million times. You can 
right out, don't forget right out, where's radius? Humorous, 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 radius, 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 ulna, 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 carpal, 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 metacarpal, 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 phalanges, phalanges, phalanges. Learn these. Practice these. Write them out three times each every time you can think about it. 